So I grew up in the 1950s in New York City, and I was thinking about some of the things that were different with dogs, having dogs as pets back then. So for one thing, there were signs all over that said, curb your dog, that's C-U-R-B. And you know, if you live in a suburb, you may not know what a curb is. It's that strip of pavement um, that happens at the edge of the sidewalk before you step down into the road. So, I don't know how people did it, but they would actually have their dogs poop on the curb. So if you were crossing the street, you had to be careful. You had to watch where you walked so that you didn't step in it. Now, yes, there were a lot of parks where I grew up. I grew up in the Bronx in New York City. And there would be parks, oh, every few blocks. And some people would let their dogs just run around. And, you know, if you were a kid, you had to be careful playing in the grass. Or, oh my goodness, in the fall, the park men would rake all the, the uh, leaves that had fallen into tremendous piles. I mean, piles that were... I don't know, even six or eight feet high. And maybe 20 or 30 feet in diameter. And we would love to run and jump into them. Oh, but golly, sometimes because people hadn't been careful with their dogs, you got an unpleasant surprise jumping into a pile of leaves. Well, anyway, another thing about dogs that was different, and this was right in New York City. This was before there were a lot of big supermarkets, and mostly people shopped at neighborhood grocery stores and other types of neighborhood stores. You know, little people might call them storefronts now. So somebody would be out walking their dog and maybe wanted to go into a certain shop. So they would just tie the dog's leash around a lamppost. And they'd go in and do their shopping. And when they came out, they'd get their dog. I don't know, you know, I never heard of anybody's dog being stolen. People didn't seem to be concerned about that. I don't know, were people more honest back then? Or maybe there was kind of a neighborhood culture where people knew you, and if somebody was taking a dog and it wasn't theirs, there were enough other people around to go, hey, that's not your dog. So those are two things that were different about having dogs back then. So for those of you who grew up maybe in a different time or a different place, um, how were things different for you with dogs back then? Oh, and one other thing. Back then in the 1950s, I cannot tell you how many male dogs were named Prince and how many female dogs were named Princess. Those had to be the most popular dog names back then. I remember so many people had beagles in the 1950s, and also there were a lot of poodles, most of them named Fifi. Of course, back then, growing up in New York City, most of the dogs that I saw were dogs that lived in apartments. Oh, I can't imagine what it would have been like
a lot of the apartment houses did not have elevators. And say you lived on the fifth floor and every time you had to walk your dog, you had to walk down five flights, then back up five flights. Oh my goodness. No, I didn't have a dog when I was growing up in New York City. So what I'm telling you about is what I observed and what people have told me. Oh, and the jumping in the leaves part, personal experience. So how is it different now from when you were growing up with dogs? This was a very popular dog food in the 1950s. And when someone would comment on how much I had grown, my father would joke and say, that's because we feed her grow pup. <laughs>